imagine flying down a mountain at more than 70 miles an hour on a snow shovel. That's how an Edgewood man became a world champion. And he's getting ready to defend his title. Kate Godwin joins us now live with more on this story. Kate. Craig, John Strader admits a lot of people think he and his fellow shovel racers are a bit unusual. After all, they can spend up to a year planning and building shovel sleds to compete in a race that only takes about 13 seconds. But those 13 seconds can become a thrilling, sometimes dangerous, but always a very exciting ride. He's New Mexico's winter sport claim to fame. I just lay down on it and fly down the hill. And now, John Strader is gearing up to defend his World Shovel Racing Championship title at Angel Fire next month. To get up there and to beat everyone again, that would mean a lot. Shovel racing's popularity may be growing, but you won't see it, say, in next month's Olympics. That doesn't mean these racers don't think it's ready for the international spotlight. After all, it takes something as simple as this and turns it into a thrilling downhill racing competition. We are one of the most exciting sports around. I mean, you know, 72 miles an hour on a snow shovel. Now, is that exciting? I think that's pretty exciting. Competitive. Strader's in trouble. Strader flipping end over end. And sometimes dangerous, something John knows well after a crash two years ago that damaged several vertebrae in his back. But that's in the past. Right now, for John and his fellow racers, the goal is to drill, grind, and piece together the perfect downhill shovel sled. And as far as defending his title goes... Walking away is also good. That's also good. You know, walking away with your sled intact to race another day, that's good. That, that's, that's shovel racing. John will defend his world titles the first week of February. Incidentally, that's just before the Winter Olympics begin. And even though shovel racing isn't in the Olympics this year, John says he thinks it will be someday. Craig? Looks dangerous. All right, Kate, thanks. The Winter Games aren't just about figure skating and ski jumping. Some non-traditional sports are trying to get in on the action. Tonight, Steve Stucker gives shovel racing a try. Guys like New Mexico's John Strader. He races on what he calls modified snow shovels. World champion, 72 miles an hour, world record. Now, I've been sliding on lunch trays, but a shovel? Isn't that a little weird? Extreme, perhaps? Is it as much fun as it looks like? It's such a blast. If you've ever liked to sled or do anything like that, I mean, it, it's like the ultimate rush. So, of course, I asked the guys to show me how it's done. Like, like hook your feet right there. Okay. So that way, you can... And then this, this steer? This is your steering right there. So what you do is you're, to... You're kidding me. No, that's... that's <laughs> you go the down a mountain on this thing? <laughs> Had you been drinking heavily when you came up with this idea? <laughs> Actually, the maintenance guys at ski areas are the brains behind shovel racing. And the lift operators, at the very end of the day, uh, the chairlifts were very, very slow, and they'd keep the, the, the ski areas open till dark. And so these guys would like ride the chairlift down, freezing to death, and so they just finally started riding their shovels down the hill because it was much, much faster. Interesting. So where are the brakes on this thing anyway? When you're ready to stop, feet out, use your hands, pull the shovel out, and then just slide. Got it. <laughs> So if you feel like you're losing control or you're going too fast, lay back. Sounds pretty scientific. It's like we call it the dead man position. <laughs> the dead man? <laughs> okay. Well, maybe I'm getting cold feet. Or is that just the wind chill up here? 
Well, too late to back out now. <laughs> More like no brains. <laughs> Let's try that bad boy again. Here we go. You guys actually have hopes of someday getting this in as an Olympic competition. We think this is probably one of the most exciting wild action sports uh, in winter sports. It seems like as much a winter sport as some of the other questionable events. Great! Hard! Oh, not. Oh, real hard! Ah, fabulous! Absolutely fabulous! 14 days of curling in the Olympics. 14 <laughs> days! And they'll probably get two minutes of TV exposure. I mean, I, I, it makes no sense to me why something as boring as that would be an Olympic sport when something as exciting as this is not even considered. And of course, some of the shovel racers spend thousands of dollars souping up their sleds to make them ultra high tech and ultra fast. This That's goes faster position. than the shovel did? Yeah, this uh, last year was uh, oh. 76 miles an hour. Uh, Over 70 miles per hour? I mean, that sounds like rush hour through the construction zones. <laughs> Not sure if I'm ready for that, but it's the moment of truth. Time for me to step up a classification here. Oh. Hey, up. Hey, go. Hey, not too bad. Steve Stucker, Eyewitness News 4. That Aww, big coward. No kidding. Oh, Gee. Disappointed. Yeah. Line and I can say once you make one complete run, you'll do it. Every, well, I mean, in Angel Fire, I made it. But I mean, full run. full blast without touching the ground. Yeah. Well, no, really? not without touching the ground. No, I had to, you know, steer a little bit. But I didn't have my arms out like, you know, that bad. <laughs> okay, you heard it, folks. Tony did not have his arms out that day. <laughs> we'll look at the film. I'm soaking more carrots. We may need to let it dry a little while. Okay. <laughs> Oh, fire yeah. danger is low. I repeat, fire danger is low. <laughs> Thank God. Gail. Gail. You're in rare form today, Bob. Drug-free. You're drug-free. <laughs> That's, I read that sign, drug-free zone. Sure. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Like that, was, that was just a piece of fuzz on my lens. Here they go. Now they're off. Tony went all nice. over the place. Oh, <laughs> Yes, they are. Oh. All right, here. Oh, there's a battle. Oh, oh, oh there's a battle. Oh, he's wiping out. Oh. A battle going on. Oh. Oh. We're down. Uh, very close. We got a man down. Yeah, you don't you don't want any swelling on the spine. I don't know, Nick. Nick. So Nick. What do you think? That was awesome, fast. All right. So who won that? On the bottom. Who won that? Are they demanding a recount? I hear the cops coming, Nick. You better run. I was able to pull up and look behind, make sure no one was passing. I got third. Boy, you know what? You guys were all running, but the, well, right behind you, there was a lot of chaos. Well, I saw this guy coming up over here. I just figured, well, if I can hold on to it, he doesn't look like he's like coming up too fast. Well, okay, here he comes now. Whoa, look out, he's, he's, he's coming right up here. Right at you! So what do you think, a little redemption? So what do you think, Terry? Are you the man? Are you, did, you, did you get a place there? I think I got second. You the man! Redemption for your buddy. First, and then next thing I knew, someone was passing me. They are relying on you. Passed me right up. Good race. I had to put Good the brakes on. I see that Jerry. blue pole coming. Terry Bird. Man, my heart is pounding. Oh. I don't know what it's like up there, especially after somebody goes to the hospital. Oh, yeah. Here comes Tony. He's getting down. He was a real trooper. He was a real trooper to give us another extra race here. Tony and I. Last, last. It's like the waves of snow. The bad news is that Tony lost. The good news is that he's safe.
<laughs> okay, men with a mission. Back up to the top. Okay, standing room only over here. We're making our way to the leaderboard. Let's see who is in in the lead here after the first. Nope. Chad D. Chad Denny. John Streeter. Drew. Somewhere between the kids. Dan. No. Dev. Dev. Dave. Dave Warner. Devin Farrell. Terry B. Bird. Yeah. And Nick S. All right. Well, that, that, that's where we stand right now, folks. Billy, he's over here. He's posing. Come on, give us a big smile, Bill. Uh oh. Who's in the woods? Oh, they're not quite in the woods. Okay, they're just okay. Noticeably absent from this race. Sam Wilson, Gil Holes, Kim Romero. Noticeably absent is a beer in each of my two beer holders. Empty <laughs> chair. <laughs> this will be for six. This is the last six competitors here. They've they've made it to this this heat, the second heat. Six people. After this, it'll be paired down to the top three racing for. First, second, and third. We're ready for the start. Here we go. The racers are on course. They're close. There's a lot of them. Look at that. Look at that. It, it's, it's almost like blue angels flying down the slope. Look at them go. Up. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> you guys look like a pack of blue angels flying down the slopes. I mean, a, more of like a hell's angels than a blue angel, I guess. All right. Well, you've got enough snow in your beard to do something. Woo! That was a fast one. It's getting faster. Let's zoom in on him. Wait. You gotta be secure in your manhood to wear one of these outfits, isn't that right? <laughs> it's coming down. He, he doesn't want to get hurt here, right? Right before the final run, but he's doing his best. Okay. Is he flipping off the camera, or is he pulling up a number one there? What is that? Okay. And there's camaraderie here, even though they both want to win. Chad looking for a little revenge on John Strader, who upset him yeah, at the I show told him, you know, I got to, you know, you know what it feels like to have a couple of years. He only had like a couple of months or whatever. Well, I know what it's going to feel like if somebody doesn't beat John, we'll never hear the end of it. Never, <laughs> ever. But you know what? I wouldn't have wanted to lose to a better guy. Man, coming through that finish, I'm like catching mega dude. air, dude. <laughs> it's getting bumpier and bumpier. John hit the ground. Here comes another one. We got a, right. another oh, yeah. racer coming up here. <laughs> How did it feel? Was it great? Was that great? Three miles an hour on that one. Woo! Woo! Getting faster. Good man. No, actually, you were trying to go slow there. The slowest four get to go. You guys are eliminated. Part of your shovel. Let's see that shovel. Let's see that shovel. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a good sport. Hey, hey, that's cheating if you alter the shovel there like that. Chad? Chad won. You got straight or second. All right. Come on, Chad. Let's win. Let's go do it. You can split the gas cost, baby. All right. Last run, baby. John? All right, John. All right. So the last local, it's your. It's up to you to defend this hill. That's right. Do you think you can do that? Uh, I wish I had my cup with me on the last run. Uh, your I'm voice is a little bit higher, but not, not so high yet. I'm feeling comfortable. I, I'm thinking that the bar is calling to me any time now. Good or die, DK. Yes, sir, coach. Right. There it was. All right. He's the coach, huh? We got the coach over here? All right. Okay, our heroes walking off into the sunset. The Golden Boys. All right, John is using some unfair padding there, it looks like. <laughs> Woohoo! What a competitor. And an all around nice guy, me, myself. Now, those guys, I don't know, don't really know them that well, so can't vouch for them.
All right, we've got people from all over the state of New Mexico. I was going to say the continent, but we could secede and it would be a country. We've got one local left in uh, Albuquerquean and a uh, Angel Fireian, I guess is what you say. Film is rolling. We just don't want to miss the final heat of this momentous, legendary shovel race. We will see who will be crowned king of Pajarito Mountain. They're coming, they're coming, y'all. Chad's looking pretty devastated. Chad is looking pretty good. I think he's got some of his killer wax on. This is going to be uh, anybody's race. I think all these guys are pretty evenly matched. One's got local knowledge. That'll help Max. These other guys have a lot of experience. But I, there they go. They're starting. It looks like a good race. Oh, two of them are bumping into each other. Two of them. Are, okay, it looks like. Oh, and I missed it. I, I didn't have it rolling. Oh, no, oh, no I, had, I had it rolling there. Chad got it. It was Chad. Were you guys bumping off of each other? Were you pushing off each other there for a second? It looked like there was some contact at the top of the hill there. No, you know, he cut right in front of me. He just goes, Vroop. I mean, that's what happened every single run. He got right in front of me every time, and then I'm like... But he had a fast run on the outside, too. I was watching. We were really close, and then I hit a bump or two, and I yeah. dragged, and then he pulled ahead and went right past. I knew he That was me. a terrific run. That was a good yeah, run. That was a good run. It was very fast. Very fast. All right, let's hear it for these brave individuals. Daredevils. Daredevils. All right. Come on, let's get, let's get, let's get the three of you over here. Let's get. Embracer, you can embrace. Yeah. Okay, let's get, let's get the three of you. How about, how about a little, how about a little, uh... Huddle. All right. So, that's the finale to the, the first annual Pajarito Shovel Race. Do you see me turn around and look at you guys through the finish? No, I was too busy hitting them whoopty doos. You guys, they're, they have contenders here. It has started here in Los Alamos, New Mexico, the first annual shovel race. Oh, right there. Woo! That was so sweet, man. And there, there we have our, our top three racers of the day. Yeah, here we go. Let me get a picture. You want me to shoot a, you want me to shoot a photo of one of this? No, it's actually yeah. a little funny, though. John, where are you from? Where am I from? Where did you come from? Well, you know. Okay, too long. Chad, where are you from? <laughs> Angel Fire, next All right. Company. And we all know where this gentleman's from. He's the local hero. And that was it. He got up. That's just it. He got up. He got up and that was it. All right. Money winners. Double action. And more importantly than the money, you have the plaques to prove it, to put on the walls of fame. That'll be on the wall at De Calores Restaurant. That should be illegal. That should be that should be an illegal move right there. Somebody take that thing away. Get that away from you. Second annual Pajarito Mountain Banzai Shovel Race Invitation. Get that away from him before he swallows it. It will fit in his mouth. <laughs> All right, Tony's having a little bit of fun now. He's not injured. He's ready for maybe a stuski. Something. And there's Daniel. Hi ho! I had no idea. All I knew was that I was flying, and also they hit that finish line, and I hadn't done it yet. And I hit it over on this side where that bump was, and I just went. I was off the other yeah, shovel. Went some, flying, I was, like, Whoa. was it was it some illegal Kim Black propulsion, John? Was that what you were using on that? Thanks, God. John, was that the illegal? Chad, come on! You man! Okay, and there was there was there was Chad Denny, the winner. Uh, he was he's lining up a date with one of the ski patrollers. It looks like. Let's see. There's Chad. There's the guy, the girl he was lining up a date with. Yes, 
Speaking of which, Chad, did you ever get your money from Angel Fire? Because some dude looked yeah. up. Yeah, I'll it for you, and there was the 100 bucks in there. It was cool. <laughs> nice. I never got my plaque from Angel Fire. Yeah. He's a guy that I went to Boston there for a while and was working down there. I worked with him and I turned him and another guy on to like third or fourth the year before. Really? Yeah. Last year was his first year and he was <laughs> Okay, well, John here is going to uh, let's get, let's take get some prizes. Yay! Winner's prizes. Yay! Okay. All right, the small crowd once again. Hold on. Thank you very much for coming and playing. This has been great. Wait, wait, Let's wait start. for our camera. Hold on. Alrighty. <laughs> so, Chad, Chad, what do you attribute this win to? Was it the wax? Was it the shovel? The driver? Maybe a little it combination? Was, it's either operator error or he had me on the start. Every it looked time. like there was some contact. Pulled in front of me, and there was no way to pass. Was there contact at the top? Contact? Did we? No, we never touched. Oh, it looked like it from the camera angle, but it's because because he did this. We're going, and then he pulled ahead and went right in front of me, and then I'm like, whoa, and then I'm just drafting. There's well, no way to get ahead then. So that was a smooth move. Thanks, Ronnie, for your help. Thank you very much. Yeah. I do have I do have footage. All right. All right. I will want to talk to you about trading out with them. I'm guessing it'll be on the I took six. All right. Which way? Worldwide way. Look at this beautiful ski area, folks. Tons of trees. Somehow, the skiing gods were smiling on Los Alamos okay. when they let okay. the fire bypass this whole area. Okay, here we go. This is it. All right. Come on, get that. Come on, Chad. Quit posing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to say thanks once again to all the sponsors LAMB, Cowan Construction. Gaiman's Machine Shop, Dunman Racing, IFS, and Pyrito Mountain. Yay! All right, Pyrito! Right. 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 Thanks for doing this. It's been a dream of mine for, for quite a few years, and it finally came through. So, uh, I'm so glad to have everybody here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Now, we'll get, get through all that blah, blah, blah. There you go. Uh, all right, qu quiet over there. Thanks. In the first annual Bonsai Double Race, this is Mr. John Strader. Can we hear from John Strader? He had the black space, so we wanted to take one. All right, John. Good job. Good job. Sixty dollars. Wow. Healthy. <laughs> Bro, dues. Bro, dues. Okay. And now second place. Hey, dumb eraser. Yeah. DK Warner. Oops. Yeah. Local hero. You can't buy a drink in this town. Mostly because you're cut off. Eighty dollars. All right. Hey, man. Hey, DK, hey, 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 hey. All right. You the man. And last, but actually Woo. first. All right. <laughs> yes. We have Chad Denny. All right. Who is All right. Yeah. 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 The first winner. Here we go. I'm back, baby. Of the first annual. All of this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Speech. All right, speech. Speech. Yeah. Speech. Speech. When's the next race? <laughs> right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> I'll race you to the bar. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Excellent choice. You guys are over here. Can I say? Can I right say here. one more thank you up here? To the Los Alamos Police Department yeah. right behind us here. Yay! Yay. 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 Well, actually, he's not part of it, but. What was the miles per hour on that last run? Uh, 59. So, so that the, the second heat was the fastest. 63? Uh, you guys looked faster than that, but who well, knows? Thank you guys for the get out of jail free card. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. You know, Are you sure you haven't been you drinking, guys, sir? Everyone for showing up today. You know, every single person here made it possible. People to come watch, people to come race, all the volunteers, the ski patrol, thank John you, ski Dummer, patrol. everyone patrol, who was here. You, very much. you know, I mean, this is this is this is a big deal because John and I've been trying to pull this thing off for years. And uh, hey, hey, okay, wait a second. One more, one more thing. I want everybody to wave and say hi to Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hey, wave, hey. wave, hi, Jerry. Hey. All right. Hey. We're still thinking of you. Nice shirt, Gail. <laughs> All right. Everybody wave and say hi to Jerry. All right. We miss you, bud. <laughs> All right. We're going to go party. <laughs> All right. Too late to race. You're specking out the course for next year. Big seeing you. Safe travels home. Oh, yeah. No problem.
Great camaraderie. <laughs> were they were they all just a bunch of babies, Chad? They were just afraid you were gonna beat them again, huh? Oh yeah, they're exactly. all hurt, man. They're shaking in their boots. <laughs> Who's this? All right, well. All those guys in Angel Fire, they're like, oh, it's gonna be cold. <laughs> I called from Taos, I was like, man, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's gonna be a beautiful day. You don't know what you're missing. It's a beautiful day. So we, we got the Angel Fire contingent right here, baby. It was fun. Sacrifice the shovel. Uh oh. Uh oh, bent the shovel. I did that myself. to wintertime slope sliding, we've got the inside scoop. It's called shovel racing. Whoa! Oh my lord! Shovel racing used to be, well, just that. But saddling up to a streaking spade got old, and competitors decided to add a few bells and whistles to their scrap iron ponies. 
To do that means slapping on a few skis, borrowing the odd aircraft part or two, soldering on a roll bar, and voila! A greased aluminum platter is turned into a mountainside missile. It's unique, it's different. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else like it anywhere in the world. And if you look carefully, you'll still find a shovel blade within 12 inches of the driver's seat and touching the snow. Without it, there's no racing. Where else are you going to find a thousand foot course that will bring up to speeds of 80, maybe 90, maybe someday over 100 miles an hour? Wow, amazing. And John, you were just saying that you've been racing for 21 years? 21 years, riding snow shovels. That's fast. It's fast. I mean, that, that's pretty amazing to check that you out. Know, I, we, it's just so much fun. I mean, if you ever went sledding as a kid, riding down the hill on a tube, anything like that, I mean, that's what shovel racing is. I mean, it's the ultimate sled ride. We call it poor man's loop. You're looking, you're looking for a run with no trees on it, and they won't let you on the ski run normally, so this is a way you just there pay you your fee and you let it rip. You know what it's I thought great. was funny, John, is you were talking about people out there snow shoveling, because when I first heard you guys were coming on the show, they were talking about how you guys were the world champs in, in snow shovel racing, and I thought it was like shoveling A couple of fiddler snow. crabs. <laughs> do other <laughs> people think that, too? You know, people yeah. do. I mean, it, people <laughs> I have all kinds that. of ideas what shovel <laughs> racing is, how fast we can shovel. Yeah. It's definitely not how fast we can shovel. Right. In fact, it like makes it. you cringe when you see people using those snow shovels for I, what I they're actually the, supposed to be used for. I see them in the backs of trucks and, you know, getting abused and scratched and scraped and I just like oh, oh. That's you know, so, uh, actually we're out here we we're trying to like solicit more races we need we need more places to go and the great thing is is that people of all ages can do this not just you know grown men there's a little scoops division there's teenagers there's women's there's there's seniors oh. division come on Park City but we want a be, shovel race here great it's really inexpensive to get going all you need is a shovel initially uh -huh. the modified ones take a lot more work but uh it's developing rapidly and we've got some pretty hot sleds going all right, well, we're going to see you guys over at Girl Grows a Park. That's today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow from uh, 12 to about 5, both okay. days. And so we can catch you doing this and telling people about it and showing yeah. it the we'll whole We'll have videos. Deal. We'll have info, handouts, the, anything they want to know. We'll sh sleds on hand. We'll be doing some demonstrations. We're cool. ready to go. Can people try it out? Gosh, we'll, we'll, if they uh, let us. We'll, the sleds are pretty much designed to fit no, like exactly me, show. but okay okay i see the, so at least the, the shovels it. sure yeah we got plenty yeah, of we extra got shovels, shovels so they okay. can yeah, ride some snow shovels all right so now gorgoza like. park is located off of highway 80 you're coming into park city it's the eld ecker hill many people might know of that area so easy to get to if you're going in and out of town so you guys have some fun while Thank you're you here very much all right thanks all right, for coming you rock. You great rock. to see Thank you come on park city snow shovel racing snow shovel racing right here in park city utah believe it or not stay with us if you're going to hit the slopes, we'll have our snow report when we come back. Well, you know, maybe this winter you're kind of tired of skiing. You've done some snowboarding, and of course, there's always sledding. Now we'll show you a new way down the hill. All you need is something you've probably got right outside the door. It's time to grab your shovel and go. What started in the 1800s when miners needed to get down the mountains fast has now become an international sport, snow shovel racing. It has many looks, but one rule, the shovel must touch the snow at all times. It's actually very safe. I mean, it's real fun. We got kids from six years old doing it. Uh, last year, we had an 80-year-old man do it. He went 14 miles an hour, and he was proud. But John Strader goes quite a bit faster. In fact, he holds the world record at 72 miles per hour. The speeds are fun. There's something even better. When these things crash, it's like yard sale. Boom! Explosion. Pieces flying everywhere. Pow, pow, pow. And that's what the crowds love. It's like NASCAR. It's like IndyCar, <laughs> gravity-powered Indy cars on snow. Unlike other sports, the learning curve for snow shovel racing is low. Now, since you're a beginner, what I'm going to say, the best way to start is have your hands kind of out like this down to the ground. Like so low, in fact, a sports intern can learn. If you start feeling out of control, lay down. Corpse position. Lay down all the way back. Just and drag on the snow. While it's not an Olympic sport yet, they're racing to that goal. Love it. You gotta love it. <laughs> Best action in town. <laughs> and maybe it is the best action in town right now. <laughs> That's funny. Quite fun, yes. <laughs> Yard sale. I love it. No one Boom. Like, he liked I was it waiting for NASCAR. some crashes, though. Unbelievable. Coming up on the show, more. Team Shovel Meister, USA, 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 USA. 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 
they're grown up kids. Adrenaline junkies who ride shovels down a hill at 65 miles an hour. Now it does take a special breed of psycho to do this sport. For 35 bucks, anyone can buy a stock shovel and try this. The blue collar sport is growing in popularity, but not fast enough for Albuquerque's John Strader. We believe that if, if sports like curling are exciting enough to keep people interested, we think shovel racing can do it. Strader and his New Mexico clan want shovel racing to become an Olympic event. On this day, he's going to watch bobsledding, but he hopes one day he'll be on the same track racing his shovel. The bobsled uh, and luge track is very underutilized. I mean, all over the world, there's only three sports, skeleton, luge, and bobsled, that are allowed on that track, and there's a lot of downtime. There are two other types of shovel racing, light and super modified shovels. That is unreal, man. The light modified looks like a soapbox derby on snow. The shovel is hidden underneath. Strader says shovel sliding has been around for as long as loggers and miners have worked in the mountains. Now he wants the shovels to be accepted in the mountains again. back up the hill to go down again. It's basically sledding for dads. <laughs> you know, you put them on the flexible flyer. <laughs> you, hey, guys you do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll do, do it. I'll do it. I'm cheating. I'll do it. see any action. It's a super modified snow shovel. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. There's a snow shovel right underneath. If you look real close, right underneath there is a shovel. What makes it super modified is it weighs over 100 pounds, so it's fully enclosed, five-point roll cage. We got a rack and pinion steering here. 
and there's a nitrogen bottle in the front. He pushes this button right here, and the big plow in the back goes. Wow. Sweet. So are you going to demonstrate it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, How high you start them? You're going to go down like this, this over here? Time. This over here? Yeah. And this would be basically considered a baby slope for us. Shoveling what? I'm not sure, but some folks want to make it an Olympic event. World champion shovel races. We're at Gor uh, Gorgosa Park today in Park City showing off their technique. Shovel racers in a scoop shovel can reach speeds of up to 72 miles an hour. These racers actually competed in last year's X Games. This modified shovel racer looks a lot like a bobsled. It can reach speeds of, you will not believe this, 80 miles an hour. 80 miles I, an hour. When you said shovel race, I was thinking. I was thinking that, that too, yeah. Right. saw the video. I've got a shovel at home. I'll try that. <laughs> no, I won't. Have a nice night, everybody. Well, uh, the race itself started about 28 years ago, Angel Fire, New Mexico. Uh, the uh, lift maintenance crews would uh, walk down the, uh, and uh, the trail maintenance crews, they'd be walking down the uh, slopes, and they didn't have uh, snow making that day, so they'd go to the trees, scoop out some powder, walk out, dump it on the bad spots, pack it in, jump on the shovel, slide down a little further, get some more snow, pack in the spots, and they'd keep going and do that along the trails, you know, to help keep everything open. And the ski instructors and the uh, patrol would just laugh at them. They're like, you guys look like a bunch of idiots sliding down your butts, on your little shovel, and whatever, and so then they dared them to give them a race one day. So we had a couple skiers against a couple shovel racers and uh, one of the shovel racers won and uh, we started uh, racing them ever since. Well because you know we believe that if, if sports like curling are exciting enough to keep people interested we think shovel racing can do it. Uh, people have been clocked over 65 miles an hour on the loose tracks in snow shovel racing. Uh, we think that we could have the modifieds. I mean how beautiful would it be to have see these incredible modified sleds from all over the world each one completely different painted up in the colors of their country rocking down the slopes exploding on impact. I mean oh it's gonna be beautiful. So what's the holdup? You know, uh, we need more people racing, we need more venues, and uh, you know, we need to just get more exposure. We need them to see how great we are. Because right now I think that, you know, a lot of people, they, they hear shovel racing, they immediately conjure up this idea of like how fast we can shovel a pile of snow. You know, I mean, 72 miles an hour on a snow shovel is the world record, and uh, I think that's pretty fast, pretty exciting. <laughs> I don't know. We're, you know, we, uh, we're all a little silly, I guess, but, uh, you know, we, we're excitable. We're excitable. We love our sport, and, uh, you know, we're easy to get worked up, and uh, we're, we're adrenaline junkies. We're adrenaline junkies to the max. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, modified shovel racing is kind of like sledding for, for the adults. I mean, you know, you know, when you're a kid, you love to sled. You're flying down on your flexible flyer or whatever. But as you get older, well, you don't fit in them anymore. People look at you like, ah, uh, you know, you're acting like a kid. So it's basically grown-up sledding, you know. It's, it's sledding for the big guys. I said, this sport, no matter how much it looks like it's going to fail one year, tons of media the next. We go from zero to hero to hero to zero, back and forth like every single year. It's just unbelievable. One of these years, though, we're going to break through because it's, it's unlike any other sport. It's not the two-man, the five-man, the six-man shovel. It's the one-man shovel, and this is it, baby. One man, time to vent, no judges. You win or you lose. That's it. No judges. Just speed. Mechanics, mechanical laser eye, timing you, and that's it. Aerodynamics? Totally aerodynamics. Woohoo! I'm rolling. <laughs> All right, so again, John, how do you envision the Olympics to be? Uh, you mean the future of shovel racing in the Olympics? The rules. What? Well, I, I see that there would be a. a three main divisions with each with two events. On the production, the grain scoop, we would have the, uh, the poor man's luge, which would be riding the shovels down the luge track. And then we would have a side-by-side -side drag race where you'd have one day where it'd be just timed qualifications and then it'd be head-to-head -head competition on the shovel, straight down, full speed ahead. Then in the modified, both the light modified and the super modified, you'd have two separate races. You'd have a road course where the sleds would have to maneuver through a gated area, uh, do some bank turns, uh, go through a straightaway, and then a nice long drop off at the end, a nice steep pitch, whoosh, full speed. And then uh, another head-to-head -head competition, that would be the second race where you'd have qualifying day, single timed, timed runs, and uh, then you'd have uh, sleds going head-to-head -head competition, uh, burning down the hill, you know, full speed, out of control, exploding on impact. Gotta love it. We'll someday be standing on the Olympic podium for snow shovel racing with the gold.
So for the next generation. The next generation. That's what we're doing this for. I know that the chances of me getting into the Olympics are very slim, but uh, I'll take a drive down that loose track any day. Are you listening? Okay. This is nitrogen. We're charging the brake system, which is the air, the air bottle here, for his air brake. It can freeze using common air, and he'll have brake failure. And usually it's catastrophic. <laughs> sick. It's sick. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys build it all like, yourself? Oh, yeah. Sweet. It's like a chrome molly, same thing they use on Indy cars. Are you guys going to be taking it for a spin? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where are you going down there? Yeah. 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 Nice. Right over there. Can we take a ride? That is unreal. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> what do you think of it? Like, like, this thing is sick. That is unreal, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cruise this thing. <laughs> Primal. I can fit. I can fit. I can do it. <laughs> Just give me a chance. This, this is my yeah, thing right here. This is my thing. Actually, our hill yeah. where we race from thing. is like the very top I'm, of the I'm trying to get it for the Winter Olympics. Like you know? I'm coming off that big kicker. I will do, but... Maybe something you big. Turn or is it just straight? Um, you think this could be an Olympic event? No, but we're thinking about maybe... We can make it one today. We'll, we'll prove it to the world. It's, it's going to go off. Custom rack and pinion steering. Look at this system. I had that uh, steering box that was made yet. For the X Games? First Winter X. I mean, they canned us because we were too dangerous. I remember there was like the they were, they were bigger pods though, right? They were like they were pretty big and they were getting well, we had nuts. We used four ski machines and stuff too. Yeah, but uh, like I said, we learned a lot. Now we're not just a bunch of low tech hillbillies. No suspension though. You figure that doesn't work? Um, it gets kind of squirrely if you hit some bumps and it kind of makes you turn. Then you got to correct, and that costs a couple of hundreds of a second. You need to get some twin tip skis on these things, so that way you can get doing some tricks. Going backwards, yeah, there you go. well, that's and then go off the jump and do like a we'll change it once it starts barrel roll. Yeah, get, this is like the. And you know, we got helmets, so that protects your neck too. <laughs> and your it. Like, God, God is our protection. I'd be wearing one of those. He, neck he is my insurance. <laughs>
Now sled heads use them, huh? Okay, how's that feeling? Good, good. Mm -hmm. Maneuver okay? Mm -hmm. Wheel? What do you want your wheel? Yeah, power three. Right it's not all gas, okay, but we use gas. A little tight? That's supposed to be. Let's see That's you tighten it one more time. You'll never steer more than that. Great. That's a lot. Go for it. Here it comes. Here it comes. will be yeah. ready also coming out we're uh, coming up rather we're going to check out a dubious hobby it's called shovel sledding have you all ever sh uh, sledded on shovels yeah. that's encouraging Listen, if i did i'd sound like casey <laughs> anyway. after, after the race <laughs> <laughs> very funny you'd be singing soprano anyway we're also going to look back at some incredible moments <laughs> You know, it used to be that when you talked about luge, you talked about... Is this a tool for shoveling snow? Or your ticket to the top of an Olympic medals podium? On the shovel, straight down, full speed ahead. John Strader and Gail Bowles have come to Utah to try to convince the world that shovel racing should be the next Winter Olympic sport. You know, we believe that if, if sports like curling are exciting enough to keep people interested, we think shovel racing can do it. Strader calls shovel racing the poor man's luge, a sport that would be accessible to anyone with a shovel and ski hill nearby. Is it a true sport? Well, each year at Angel Fire, New Mexico, shovel racers compete on everything from basic snow shovels to modified racers built on top of shovels. I mean, how beautiful would it be to have see these incredible modified sleds from all over the world, each one completely different, painted up in the colors of their country, rocking down the slopes. Even though Strader faces an uphill battle to get this downhill sport into the Olympics, he's determined to do so. USA! USA! One of these years, though, we're going to break through because it's, it's unlike any other sport. Shovel racing mania, baby! ブレイクシティ近くで番組スタッフが取材しました。こちらです。はい。このはい。
<笑>そしてより操作しやすくしたのが改良型がこちらのシャベルカーです、はい、これで競技が広く知られるようになって夢はオリンピックの正式種目になることなんですね<笑>そんな日が来るかもしれませんねニュースみたいですね<笑>この後は週間天気ですはいはいはい Like a big black cloud hanging over me, searching to be free. Well, you got to change, you got to reform. Well, now you got to reform. Can have your way. Hoping all the time to make a brighter day. But you got to change. Lord knows you got to change. You got to reform. Well, now you got to reform. Oh, so fucking c o n
back in. What we teach beginners, the worst thing you can do is sit up and hold the shovel. Because then you're on this curved part, and you can spin around backwards. <laughs> this will dig into the snow, and instead of your balls, this will wham right in the head. Yeah. So, we, we actually so, call that the Danny Cortez. The Danny Cortez of MTV, and he did that exact thing. We said, Danny, you better wear a helmet. Oh, I don't need a helmet. <laughs> and he just knocked him unconscious. Shovel racing. Exactly. He didn't listen to himself. But what we tell people is what we have, what we call the safety position. It's the corpse <laughs> position. If you're losing control on the shovel, the best thing to do is just lie down, lay right. back. And if you're sideways, oh, wherever you're at, again. it'll just straighten you back out. So if you're like, whoa, you lose control, lay back, and it'll just whoa, drag you back to the front, and then you sit back up and you go. But you don't ever hold on to the handle, and you never sit forward. It's loose. Most of the time, you're having to like most of the way down. So on a run like that, it was just perfect. You know, you, the, if you stay focused, you keep your feet pointed, stay back. You don't want to lean too far back or your back will drag on the snow. That'll slow you down. So you want to be just like this. And it's an ab workout. You can see I have a speed ab here. My <laughs> unit ab. call it the speed hump. The speed hump. People say, well, how come the big guys do better on shovel racing? And we're like, well, the wind comes over, catches this, and <laughs> To stop, there's, there's several different ways. What we do is, you know, we tell some people just go into the corpse. Or you can sit up. Then you can hold the shovel just as stability. Use your feet, but you eat snow really hardcore at those speeds. What I do is I slow down a little, pull the shovel out, and I slide. I just I sometimes I like actually scrape the shovel like that. I used to do that, but I'd bend the hell out of my you shovel, so shovel I stopped doing it. A lot of people do that. They'll pull up on the handle, but then their shovel's bent, and you can't use it again. So just a regular hardware store, Ace Hardware in Albuquerque. And the only, now, on a shovel like this, you cannot modify it at all. Some people try to fill in the grooves or try to cut pieces pound to make it, flat. it pound it flat. Or, those are all illegal. All you can do is decorate the handle, maybe paint something in here, you can sand and you it, can sand, buff it, wax it, but that's box. it. You have to stay stock grain scoop shovel. Pure shovel. Pure shovel. Pure shovel. It's just me and this right here. Standard production. 72 miles an hour on this shovel. Now, I only went 74 on that. So we're hoping that maybe even next month, or next, next year we want to have the national championships here because they have such a great course. And we, have, we feel that this would be a really good hill in Park City to race these shovels because you can see it everywhere. They got all the snowmaking ability. They got the cats that they can carve things. So it's perfect for us. How did you know you were going 72? Because they clock this. They have like timing trap. You know, we got, it's, 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 a, it's a timing system that starts at the top and then there's a trap at the bottom. And so when you start going, you break the timing system here and then you break it at the end. So it's pure time. It's like, uh, yeah, there, there is a difference though. With the production, you're allowed to push off. So it is yeah. kind of like a, like a loose start. With that, it's just a dead drop. Yeah, that, so it's, it's got a, a, a clip. And they just go three, two, one, chink, and it just drops out. And what's the real launch? We'll do. I'm a realist and I realize that for the Olympics to get interested in us, it's got to be something that's done in other places and in Olympic style venues. So the way I see it is people are already riding shovels down loose tracks all over the world. It's never been organized into a sport. You have these loose and bobsled tracks all over the world that are completely underutilized by three sports. You know, so there's a lot of dead time on these tracks where, you know, we just we just step up with our shovels and a helmet and we're there. So it wouldn't it doesn't cost them anything. You oh, know our, what I mean? Our way around uh the heavy modifieds is a lot of people, are, I mean, America's a melting pot of a lot of different cultures. I'm half Swedish. I could go race for Sweden. Um, there's a lot of different people here that are maybe even immigrants and, and are, you know, from different countries where we could get it going that way because it's basically like auto racing. And uh, once it starts catching on, yeah, I mean, I work it in the garage in Atlanta and bring it out to New Mexico or Park City. I think that, that realistically, the first sport to be included would be the, the poor man's luge shoveling on a loose track. I think that would wake up the world and it would be the easiest thing to convince them to do because we already do it on the loose tracks. And so wherever you have an Olympic, you already have a loose track. They don't have to spend money to another ski area to build a course and put up a catch net. And to, cause that's, you know, that, that's time intensive, labor intensive, and it costs money. But to do on the loose tracks, it doesn't cost them anything. It's he's, already there. He's the Don King of shovel racing. So, <laughs> I'm, here to, I'm here to smooth out the rough edges. So I think that after, after this was an event and people saw how exciting the shovels are, they would obviously be curious about the modifieds, and that would be the next evolution. So yeah, production, poor man's luge would be the first. And uh, I mean, 
even uh, already, even in the paper yesterday, the, in the in the Salt Lake paper, when I was telling them about that, they called up and asked the guy who runs the loose track here, and uh, asked him, you know, well, what do you think about shovel racing on loose tracks? He's like, well, I've gone 45 on this track, you know, and he's the guy that runs the course. And he goes, well, what do you think? Do you think it'll be an Olympic sport? And he goes, well, not anytime soon, but definitely in the future, you know, because I mean, it's it's already there. It already works. People already do it. But see, the thing is, is that most of these Olympic sports are elitist. We are a blue collar working man sport. Every working truck in America has a grain scoop in the back of that truck. When I walk by and I see some guy gravel and stuff, I just cringe. I'm like, oh, you're hurting the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then when I go in the better off going in with something that didn't that was a kind of a modified shovel that maybe didn't have a handle or something that you could go to them and say this is a new sport versus you know are they really going to buy the idea of why not i mean you, you can't Bob regulate Curling. something that you have to get right off the right off the stock right off the shelf you know that's the thing i mean it's already a sport that's done it's already something that happens i mean i'm just wondering though wouldn't he's talking about waking chance? up the world and you're soiling it stop oh. it <laughs> no you know i mean no, the IOC isn't going to take <laughs> Yeah, I was like, ah, the sled. But I mean, that's like really low speed for what we normally do. I mean, that was maybe 25. I mean, that very slow. I mean, I'd like to go to the very top of that jump and just burn, but you know, the ski area is open, so. Like here comes Bolas. But like I said, I mean, this is very, very low speed compared to what we're normally, normally doing. And this is a very soft pack course. I mean, they ice our course down because of the harder, the faster. <laughs> well, he's won twice. I've taken this. He aged me out there. Now we have a uh, we have a race at a place called Pajarito, where we basically line up eight across on shovels, and it's just like bonsai. Ah! Everyone pushing and fighting for position, you know, in a race like that. But in our world championships, it's just. That's right. See, I'm telling you, the speed ab helps. Rock and roll. Somebody's 
incredible and frightening at the same time. I saw time. this thing fly, so I tried to pick it up when I was flying past. You didn't run it over, did you? No, but I went, whew, you scooped it. Mind if we do that one more time? Sure. Okay. Yeah, the first shovel jump! I think I cracked my ass. That was good though. Ready? Oh, I broke my ass on that jump, man. Woo, I think I bent the shovel even. That's fun. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, you practice a little bit, you'd be in there. And then it's all just a matter of wax and uh, yeah. just having that good run. スピードが出ます。オッケー。え、ジョンさんですけれども、去年の今頃、え、時速115キロという世界記録をこのシャブルを使って記録しています。今から挑戦してみたいと思います。Yes, I think I'm supposed to, right? Yeah, that one's called, that one's yes. called Vents. I don't want you to explain. Okay. Um, sure. uh, just see how we ask you to do Okay? Yes. Okay, first thing we want to do is get you in the right position on the snow shovel. So go ahead and sit in it. Now you want to scoot back as far as you can without touching the snow. So scoot your butt back a little bit. Point is, this is the end of the end. これをしっかりと押さえる okay, you're not going to do that. Put your hands to your side just like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to be going like this so your hands are like stabilizers helping you stay straight. Okay? <laughs> just the muscle, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the muscle. えっとですね。とにかくどんなことがあってもですね、体を持ち上げるためにスピンをしてしまうということなので、必ず後ろにですね、こういった状態で滑ることが大事だとジョンさんは言っています。え、この両手を使ってですね、スピンした場合、え、とにかくこのシャベルをですね、両手を使って進行方向をコントロールしていくのがベストだと言っています。じゃあ行ってみたいと思います。そうなんです。はい。オッケー。リフトヨーレグス
appreciate it. Here's my cup. That's the brake. So the brake is right there? Yeah, watch it, watch it. Sit. John. What? The tank. Where's the tank? See me catch it, Yeah! Bring it back up here one time. I launched! Did I just burn past you? I think you'd have to start way ahead of me and then let me zoom in to frame. We could probably do it again. You see me catch air? Right should I know? What should I know first? Hold on, hold on. Let's get this thing so it stops. Okay. Whoop. Yeah, okay. Anytime you're ready. Give me a dash over there. We could probably do it again, but whoo! You caught some air? Did you catch air? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Al. Shovel racing may not be an Olympic sport, but people here in Utah certainly dig it. Get it? This snow activity is even featured in the popular holiday movie, It's a Wonderful Life, where a young George Bailey, played by Jimmy Stewart, takes off down the hill on nothing but a shovel. Christina Hardy and Sarah Vanderhoef are Deer Valley work crew members and fellow shovel racers. Nice to see you guys. How are you? Pretty Christina, good. Sarah. All right, so how did you guys start doing this activity, sport, hobby, whatever? Um, we just were at the top of the mountain one day and wanted a faster way to get down. So we hopped on our shovels and we got down. And in fact, you've been responsible, all of you guys, for keeping the venues clean, for shoveling snow, primarily for the spectators, right? Uh -huh. Did you know that, Christina, though, this is a, a sort of a hobby that was developed, a, really a sport that was developed in the 70s, because now people actually compete in shovel races, right? They do. Do you know where, where do they do They do it, what, in the X Games? Yeah, I've seen it in the X Games, and I believe a couple other winter festival yeah. sports festivals. And, and it's actually can be very dangerous. You can go up to how many miles an hour on one of these things? I believe the record is 72 miles an hour. 72 miles an hour, but we're not going to be doing that, are we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, Sarah, why don't you demonstrate the fine art? Before you do, though, any kind of shovel that works best? Um, we have found that these grain shovels Grain shovels? Work the best, because they're large and you can fit in them quite comfortably. Okay, alright, because, yes, you need something to you know, basically accommodate your derriere. Is that right? Okay, now let's see. I think we're going to try to shovel down the hill, but we've got a cable across this. I hope that that won't interfere too much. 
with the shoveling. You want to give us a quick demo? Who's, who are you going to demonstrate with, Sarah? I'm going to demonstrate with Tyler. Okay, Tyler, but go ahead. Me, do you want me to give you the technique? I'm yeah, gonna real quickly, give me the technique. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to sit in the scoop part of the shovel with the handle facing forward so right. it doesn't slow you down. And you do not hold on to the handle. Well, if you want to go fast, you do, but right now we're not going to. Okay, and thank you. And you kind of drag your feet, your hands to steer yourself, and you dig your feet to stop. Okay, so. all right, why don't you guys give it a whirl, and then we're all going to have a little race. All right. Ready? Okay, show us how it's done. Sarah and Tyler on shovel. Okay. Okay. All right, Tim, I'm going to hand this to you. You guys line up, shovelers. Okay. Okay. Where am I going? Okay, now. We're almost done with our time here in Park City, so if something bad happens, it's okay. <laughs> but please don't run into me, okay? We'll I think we're going to have uh, shovelers get ready and... The official Today Show, member of the Today Show shoveling team. That's right. You guys, thank you very much for coming by. I appreciate it. This can be sort of the winter version of American Gothic. We'll be back in a moment. This is Today on NBC. Woo! <laughs> Now, for many New Mexicans, seeing someone fly down a ski slope on a snow shovel isn't necessarily an uncommon sight. Now an Albuquerque man is gaining international attention for shovel racing. Kate Godwin caught up with the man behind the push to make that sport an Olympic event. John Strader is a common name among shovel racers here in New Mexico and even other parts of the country. But now that he's returned from a weekend at the Olympics in Salt Lake City, his name and his sport are being mentioned in several languages people were just so excited about it. They just couldn't believe what we were up to. And the excitement over shovel racing is spreading in Olympic proportions. We had a, a Tokyo Broadcasting uh, System come and do a, a major feature on us and a German television. And uh, we're still hoping that it's going to go out on the national uh, um, Olympic coverage either uh, Friday or Saturday. With spots and newscasts like this one in Salt Lake and others across the country and the world, people everywhere are getting caught up in John's dream of making shovel racing an Olympic sport. John and his fellow shovel racers covered pages in local Salt Lake City newspapers. And the poor man's luge was the perfect way for some people to take a break from the games and learn something new. Since you're a beginner, what I'm going to say, the best way to start is have your hands kind of out like this. John says his trip to the Olympic Games with his shovel sleds was a success. By the time we were driving home to New Mexico, my cell phone was ringing off the hook from people wanting to do interviews with us. But he's still waiting to get the most important call of all. The IOC has not ringing my phone yet. No, uh, we'll have to just wait and see on that. I think that they got their hands full with the event right now. Shovel racing has actually been around since the late 1800s, and it has a big following here in New Mexico. Now, the trick is for it to become popular enough for the International Olympic Committee to add it to its list of winter games. All right, thanks, Kate. You know, John had a terrible crash a few years ago, yeah, but he got back on that shovel again. Yeah, yeah I'd, need to, I'd, I'd need to start off on the bunny hill or something <laughs> like that. <laughs>
How was it, Matt? Oh, First time down. I'm sore right here already. <laughs> right here. No, no. What did you say to me, Dave? That was a rush. You're after. Definitely. I don't know how fast, but it was felt a lot faster than probably what I went. Well, you were. Well, I definitely. You know, I got a little bit, and then it, it's so long. It's just like you just kind of get tired, and you're like, okay. Do you get any dead spots? What about? That, tell us about dead spots or anything. No, I never really hit tell it. us about curve four, the first big corner. Oh, I got up there. I was I was banking pretty good. I was kind of. I felt a little. It cheap. can lay you back on your side. It me back. Yeah. I found myself way up. far back, I think, drag, and then I, then I, I didn't know if I was even on the shovel. Now what happens if you bit. grab your shovel, you're going to start taking the grab. back end in and slowing yourself down. Yeah, I never grabbed up. the shovel. I just kind of sat yeah. up. And Good. I definitely Good. tapped a lot, probably more than I should have. But. I know. Nice. For first try, I, I made first it down. Not bad. How long have you been waiting for that one? Uh, it's been, you know, it's been, yeah, right. The two brothers standing up there. It's Matt's turn. Uh, Jake had a fast and extended track so far at run number two, and he will do it to 122 86. Come Stradler. Nice, hold it, hold it, nice. The track is now clear at the next start, and run number two for John. Best time of the night, right there. That's John. Third run. 104.7.
Fantastic, oh, I unbelievable. Was so, I was so tired. That last run, it was everything I had because I couldn't even look, keep my legs up anymore. Really? I'm just like, <laughs> but that last run was actually my best run. How the third one was? Third run, I was all over the place. That was unbelievable. Did you have a good time watching that? Oh, yeah. Good time. <laughs>